Well, how long is the trip from Austin to here by plane? I, I think it's about uh, eight, eight or nine hours. Okay. So you're fresh like in the first morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so first question is about demography. And uh, uh, I spoke with you in the past about that. And I think it's very important for you. And you pointed on that a lot of your discussion and your purpose, is it? Yeah, I, I think, uh, I, you know, I really want to emphasize that it's important to have children and to create the new generation. And as simple as it sounds, if people do not have children, there is no new generation. So, um, so I, I, I very, very much strongly recommend that, um, you know, I'm very much in favor of uh, humanity expanding and creating a bright and exciting future for the world. And, um, but, but, but fundamental to the furtherance of human civilization is having humans. As, as simple and basic as that sounds, um, and, uh, you know, I, every, every year I look at the, uh, the birth rates and I'm like, it's, it's kind of a, a bit depressing because uh, birth rates seem to decline every year. Um, and I, I think, uh, you know, that perhaps my, my biggest advice um, to leaders, to government leaders and, and, and to, to the people in general would, would be to make sure to have children to create the new generation. Um, and I think any, any incentives that can be done to incent the new generation, to make it easier uh, for women to have children um, and to support the children, I think would be uh, very wise. Um, this is so fundamental, uh, and uh, I really can't emphasize that enough. If, if, we, if you don't have a new generation, there is no new generation. <laughs> um, or with current birth rates, I think it may be the generations are, are birth rates maybe half half of the replacement rate, and what that means is in three generations, the, the population will be one roughly roughly one tenth of its current size. In three generations, maybe four generations, the you the population will be one tenth of its current size. So, I I, I always um want to emphasize this point because it is so basic and fundamental that if, if, if there's not at least a birth rate which is keeping population constant, then uh, the, the, a people will, will, will disappear. Um, and disappear, Mr. Mas, disappear. Disappear. We have a lot of immigration. Somebody says that immigration is important for that reason. What, what's your point on that, immigrations? Is coming in Europe and is coming in America from the south of America and then Europe from the south of the Mediterranean Sea. What do you think about that? Well, I, I think one can't uh, depend on other countries for immigration. And in fact, if you look at, say, the, the population worldwide, um, and this is almost everywhere in the world, and it seems to be a function of how um, once a country industrializes, once a country urbanizes, the population uh, immediately starts to decline. Um, so, one could say, for example, um, like, like China could not possibly solve uh, its population with uh, immigration because if you, you know, Ch China is currently tracking to be maybe lose 40% of its population every generation. You know, that would be 700 million, 800 million people, um, or 700, roughly seven, six, 700 million people. It's a lot, basically you'd have to have the entire United States immigrate there twice every generation to simply maintain numbers, just for China. So immigration, there the, the simply aren't enough numbers in immigration. Um, and I, I, think, I think there is value to, to a culture, uh, you know, and, and we, we don't want cultures, we don't want Japan to disappear, we don't want Italy as a culture to disappear, we don't want France as a culture to disappear. I think we have to have the, maintain the sort of reasonable cultural uh, identity of the various countries. Um, or they simply will not be those countries. Um, you know, I I Italy is I Italy is the people of Italy. The, the buildings are there, but, but really, what is Italy? I Italy is the people of Italy. Yeah. 
So, I, I mean, I, I just think it's a, and, and, and I, I speak as someone who is very much, um, very much an, an environmentalist, I, and I believe in having, you know, building a sustainable future for the world. Um, I think that there are very few people who, who as, as an individual, who have done more than, than I have for, to help the environment with electric cars and solar and, and uh, batteries to create a sustainable energy future, because we absolutely need a sustainable energy future. Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> But, but, but there is an aspect of the environmental movement that I think has gone too far. Um, really? Said from you? Yes. So, said from me, you know, I think I am objectively one of the world's leading environmentalists in terms of doing things. I not, would say so. Like, I, I'm an environmentalist who does things I, of, talk, of action, not talk. I act. Um, <laughs> so, so, I feel I can say, as... Uh, as an environmentalist, that the environmentalist movement has gone too far. Um, and in that, if, if you, in the natural extension of the environmentalist movement, if you go too far, you start to look at humanity as a bad thing. You start to look at humanity as though we are a plague on the surface of the earth, um, as though humanity is a bad thing. And in fact, there are some people who think and, and say explicitly that um, in fact, there was on the fr front page of the New York Times, there was a guy who said, there are 8 billion people on Earth, it would be better if there were none. Which is crazy. Definitely. Um, so you told me a joke about that. You told me once a joke about the cows and the problem with the cows. You remember that? Oh, yeah, don't worry about the cows. The cows are fine. <laughs> cows are not going to destroy the environment. Cows are fine. Yeah. Uh, yes. You know, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of laws, European laws against uh, all the people who work with them. You know, it's a big issue for us because it seems to be a green issue, but it's a very industrial issue for us. Yeah, I think farming and cows are not, do not have a, a, any meaningful effect on the environment. Yes, um, underline, please. I, I, yes, objectively, this is true. Uh, so so the, the, if you say, like... There's, there's really only one thing that matters from an environmental standpoint uh, for carbon, which is that we are taking uh, billions, eventually trillions of tons of carbon from buried deep with it under the earth and putting, transferring it to the atmosphere and oceans. That's, the, that's actually really all that matters, is, is taking um, vast amounts of carbon from underground where it's buried and moving it into the atmosphere by burning it. Um, and if you do that for long enough, eventually you will get to climate change. Now, I think the climate change alarm is a little somewhat uh, overblown in the short term. It's still a concern in the long term, but I think it's exaggerated in the short term. Great. Um, now, now so I have to, I'm trying to thread the, the needle here between what, uh, you know, like what is pragmatic and what is sensible, what really matters and what doesn't matter. What really matters is that over the long term, over the course of the next, uh, several decades that we gradually reduce how, how many mi millions and billions of tons of, of carbon that we move from underground and, uh, to the atmosphere because we're running sort of a climate experiment that is dangerous. Um, but, I, but I also don't think that I think of it as a, a fundamental civilizational risk. It, it is, it's not going to destroy life on Earth. It's not going to destroy humanity. But it will, it will create uh, hardship if you change the climate um, o over many decades. So right. it's, 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 I, I think my, my, my message is, like, I think much more pragmatic and, and I, think, I think correct and sensible. Um, and, I, I, and I don't think we should uh, demonize oil and gas. I think we, sh we should uh, say, look, that is obviously necessary in the short term. Um, and the medium term too, and it'll be t take several decades to become sustainable. So I think if we just, without getting too worried about it, uh, seek to have a sustainable energy future um, gradually, then that's what will happen. Um, and, and so, but, but, but I think that some of the environmentalist movement has, is, is part of what is re re causing people to lose hope in the future. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, that we should have hope in the future. We should be excited about the future, and we should build the future we want. What about um, Elon? You call it 
um, the walk mind. <laughs> yes, it's, your, it's the name you gave to that. Yeah, yeah, that, walk mind that virus, island, yeah. So walk mind uh, illness. What's that virus? Yeah, so so I it's coming to Europe. I have to advise you, huh? Yes, well, this is not something you should import from America. Please don't import the work mind virus, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the, the, I mean, essentially, th that, to summarize maybe the work mind virus, it consists of creating very, very divisive um, identity politics. So it actually amplifies, work virus, mind virus, in my view, amplifies racism, amplifies uh, frankly, sexism, and all the isms. And wh while claiming to do the opposite, it, it actually divides people and makes them uh, sort of hate each other, and it makes people hate themselves. Um, and it's also anti-meritocratic. It's not like, um, you know, it's not merit-based. So you want, to, you want to have people succeed based on how hard they work and the talents, not who they are, whether they're man, woman, what, what, what race or, you know, gender, what, it, none of, that stuff is all creating, it's an artificial, uh, you know, mental civil war that is created. Um, and it's not, and, and, and let me tell you, it's no fun, okay? No fun is. <laughs> it is like, it is like, woke mind virus and fun are incompatible. <laughs> There's no fun in that. <laughs> no joy. It's, it's, it, the it, work it, virus is all about condemning people instead of celebrating people. Um, you know, like when in the work, it, it just doesn't celebrate, it's all about condemning and being divisive and, and being uh, just, I think it's just evil, frankly. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. So bad. Yeah. But have, you get a lot of problems saying so on, on your social in X or have this point of view. You were a good friend of Obama administration and now they don't really like you so much for, for this kind of speech you do in, uh, in public or not. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I just, um, I, I'm very, I'm very pro-human. I'm very pro-civilization. I'm in favor of uh, humanity. Um, and, and our collective consciousness expanding um, on Earth and going beyond Earth, um, being a multi-planet species, a space-bearing civilization, and being out there among the stars and finding out the nature of the universe. Like, all the things that, you know, it's, that seems like to me an, an you know, exciting thing, something you can get really excited about, is, is you can get excited. Like, we, we want to have ideas that make you look forward to waking up in the morning, look forward to the day, look forward to the future. And, I, you know, so you have to say, what, what excites you about the future? What moves your heart about the future? What makes you say like, yes, I'm glad about what will happen in the future. That's what we must, you know, focus on. And that's, that's why we have to have a new generation. We've got to build and we've got to grow. And, and uh, like I said, we understand, this, understand the, 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 the nature of this beautiful universe that we find ourselves in and the meaning of life or even what questions to ask about, you know, meaning of life. Um, let us explore this wondrous creation and, and have a good time doing it. Yeah. That's my philosophy. <laughs> let, me, let me go back for a little, because I want to ask you about your perception of Europe uh, as a building, not as, as people. Because Europe do a lot of laws, uh, want a lot of integration of cultures, different cultures, and uh, has different approach to the immigration. We heard uh, Meloni did a lot on that with uh, Premier Rama, I see, in the first line of Albania. What do you think about the, this approach of Europe, uh, approach uh, as building, I would say, as an established building? Well, I, I should say, like, on, on, to be clear, on, on immigration overall, I, I'm, I'm very much in favor of legal immigration. I think that um, generally, I think one should welcome to a country anyone who is willing to work hard uh, and is honest, you know, has high integrity, and will add to, you know, any given country. If somebody is an asset to the country, why not have them join? That sure. is obviously a great thing to do. Um, so I think it, it's good actually to uh, have an increase in 
legal immigration, and and a simple a legal with paper with, uh, with yeah just uh, some some approval process. Sure. Um, but with a simple requirement that look, if somebody is going to add to a country, um, like just really hard working and high high integrity, let them in. I think that's great. Um, but if there's if it's illegal immigration and there's no filter. Well, how do you know who's coming? You don't know. So you, you have to have some, you know, uh, basis for saying somebody should come in or not come in. And, and, and my argument is, like, it should be a very simple basis. Uh, will, they, will they add to the country? Will they be a productive part of the economy? And um, do they admire the culture? Do they want to join because of the culture? Uh, then that's great. Um, But if, if you know, if, if there's no process for that, then you, you don't know. I think you know at least some number of the people that come in will will not be necessarily. Uh, and, and I want to be careful because my words will be misconstrued. Yeah. I, I'm not saying all Im illegal immigrants are 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 bad. I think probably perhaps most of them are good. But but there will be some if there's no process for reviewing, not at all. Then how can you say that everyone? Who is an illegal immigrant is is going to be honest and hardworking. You can't say that because you simply don't know. Um, so, so I want to be clear, top line, pro immigration, but but let's increase legal immigration, but but we should stop illegal immigration. I think this is just logical. You you have a lot of company. That's right. You can drink because I want to do the list of the companies. Yeah. You have five, seven minutes to do that. I mean, I'm joking with SpaceX, uh, X, uh, uh, Neuralink. Uh, of, uh, so many X's. Uh -huh. uh, guess, All the X's. Guess what my favorite letter is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> X, I guess. <laughs> it's a good place to invest Italy, and it's a good place, place to invest some of, I mean, not your money, but uh, some investment from your company, of the American companies, of the, I would say, competitive companies in this place. What's your opinion? No, I, I mean, I think Italy is uh, an, an incredible country, incredible culture. I love, I love visiting. I love the Italian people. I think you guys are amazing. It's like... <laughs> so, Italia. <laughs> so... Um, So I, I, I want, I, I, you know, personally, I want, I want the, actually, I want the prosperity of Italy, and I want the prosperity of every country. Um, I want the prosperity of humanity as a whole. And, and like I said, I want us to have an exciting uh, future where we're, we're fired up about what's going to happen and really excited. So, uh, you know, I, and, and I think, um, it, it, you know, it, Italy is a great place to invest. It's a great, uh, you know, great country. Um, And, uh, but, but I, I do want to emphasize that, the, the, that I, I do worry that about the, the low birth rate. And, you know, if, if, a com if a company is to invest in Italy, they're like, well, well, you have to say, like, will there be enough people to work there? You know, <laughs> well, it's a simple question. You know, if, 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 if the workforce is declining, then yeah. if the workforce is declining, then, then, the, the, then who will work at the company? <laughs> Simple. <laughs> If there's no people, there's no people to work. Yeah, but I mean, in 50 years, 60. No, no, but I think it's even sooner than that, though. You know, If, you're so least, worried about that. Is the problem? I, I feel like a total Cassandra here, um, because like I seem to be worried about it much more than other people. Um, but you know, there just uh, needs to be people. If you don't make a new generation of people, there is no new generation of people. So that's it. I know I'm, I'm, I'm being, re you know, I'm being re re repetitive here, um, but um, I'm just, I'm just trying to state, state facts, you know. So, and uh, yeah, so it's a good place to invest. I, no, I agree, it's a good place to invest, um, and, uh, and and a wonderful country. So, um, please make more Italians, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> You said once that the internet uh, is the is the system is the nerve. I, I, I write down the, 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 your word, the nervous system of humanity. What's it? The internet. In, yes, the, you the said internet. once to me. And what's yeah, a long time ago. Actually, intelligence for you. Sorry, the artificial. Artificial. Intelligence. Artificial. Uh, uh, if that is the nervous system, intelligence, artificial intelligence. What's 
I mean, use another metaphor. <laughs> uh, you asked me what do I think of artificial yeah. intelligence? Um, Obviously. Well, you can think of artificial intelligence as um, this is perhaps the, you, it's the, the biggest inflection point in intelligence since Homo sapiens. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, artificial intelligence is, will be essentially a sort of a, a new species or is a new species. Um, so I think one of the biggest challenges, if, if, if I look at, say, civilizational risk, um, you know, the, the, the risk to the future of humanity, um, you know, birth rate is one of them. If we just don't have kids and dwindle away, um, that's one which I've talked a lot about. The other is, uh, you know, there's always like potentially nuclear war, of course, that kind of thing. Um, that, uh, then AI is also an existential risk. And we need to be, um, I think we need to be careful with the advent of AI. Um, it, it, but it is very much, it's, a, it's a, very much a double-edged sword. You can think of AI as kind of like the magic genie. You know, that, like, digital superintelligence will be capable of doing anything. Anything. Pretty much anything. But he doesn't have any consciousness. I'm, w I'm wondering about that. I mean, there is a whole question of, like, what is consciousness? In fact, so here's, like, a, I was thinking, I've thought a lot about what is consciousness and where does consciousness arise? Um, you know, to say, like, because I, I think in terms of physics, you know, um, and it, it, at least if physics is true, then we go from a side of the universe where things are almost entirely hydrogen, and then if you leave the hydrogen out in, long enough, eventually it coalesces into stars, and then those stars explode, and then they recondense. Re um, you know, and so, so mo like, most of the mass in your body is, was once at the center of a star, which is kind of wild, billions of years ago. And so, so where, where along the lines of, of hydrogen to human does consciousness arise? You get very serious when you speak about that, huh? Yeah, no, it's, it's a real question. If you leave hydrogen out in the sun long enough, it, it, it starts talking to itself. Here we are, hydrogen talking to itself. How to deal with that? So, if it is so important, how to deal? I mean, right, laws, uh, um, personal behavior, how, how to deal with that uh, artificial intelligence? This is a process, I mean. I think we need to keep, a, keep a close eye on artificial intelligence. Um, I mean, I'm in favor of some regulatory insight, uh, just so that there's someone can at least um, be a referee. Like, if you think of any game, like there's always a referee for a game. For for industries that affect the good of the people, there's are, there are regulatory agencies that oversee those industries. Anything that's dangerous is overseen by uh, some kind of referee or regulator. Um, I think we should have the same thing for AI, um, just to, to help ensure that it is beneficial. Um, the, the good part of AI is that we are headed for a future of abundance. Um, so AI and robotics will mean that there are no shortage of goods and services. You, there, was, there will be goods and services. If, if you can think of it, you can have it, basically. So. This is a uh, quite profound. Like I said, it's the magic genie. Um, AI, and, AI and robotics will get you anything you want. Um, now, usually in these sort of fairy tales about magic genies, it doesn't turn out so well. <laughs> um, you have to be careful what you wish for, even if what you wish for are wishes. Um, so it's just something we should be cautious about. Okay. Um, the, on the plus side, it will bring many benefits. Like I said, there, sure. there, w it will usher in an age of abundance. Um, the, so the, the positive scenario of AI is that there's an age of abundance and there's no shortage of goods and services, that any scarcity that, is, that exists will be only because we define it to be scarce. 
So, and it, it does seem to be somewhat of an in inevitable thing, uh, AI. So, you know, there's that, supposedly that, that uh, Chinese saying about uh, may you live in interesting times. Well, I think we currently live in the most interesting of times in all of history right now. Um, so, anyway, so my recommendation on AI is I think we want some kind of regulatory oversight just to make sure um, that it's beneficial AI. Great. Yeah. We hope so. Uh, um, so. <laughs> And what about um, uh, what the governments like, um, I mean, they are elected by people like uh, Meloni and this government and the other government, they have any risks uh, or what do you think about this uh, challenge for the, for the executive of the nations about uh, all these uh, new uh, process? Sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question. <clears throat> What's the risk for the government uh, of this uh, artificial intelligence? Are, are there any risks? Uh, I mean, uh, that democracy is finished. Well, I, I think there's certainly risk of artificial intelligence um, affecting the voting opinion, I, I suppose, and manipulating public opinion. Um, so I think there's, there's some risk of, yeah, uh, AI... Um, Manipulating the public, I think that's part. There's, there's okay. some risk of that. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay. You know, uh, but I think prob like like I said, eighty percent probable that AI is beneficial, twenty percent harmful. Okay. Something like that. I, I'm I, I'm always worried because you know we have a new government. It's two years. This government almost two years, and we have a Europe for us. It's our artificial intelligence. It seems like artificial intelligence, but it's not very intelligent. Uh, sometimes Europe, uh, and so I'm wondering what do you think about the government <coughs> and about Europe? For us, it's so important the relation. I understand artificial intelligence in the future, but in the present, uh, we have laws. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, constraints that comes from Europe. What do you think about that, if you have any opinion on that? What do you think about Italian government, which is trying to have a, a position? I would say a position, uh, Meloni. I don't know if there's more than a position. You want me to be more tough than a position? <laughs> it's okay. What do you think? It's, it's good to have a position in Europe, to be, uh, I mean, uh, I would say different from the uh, main course of European politics. Um, do, you mean, do you mean like country decisions versus EU decisions or? or? Decision about green, about the politics, immigration. Oh. I mean, I, I, there's a separate question of like, I think regulations in Europe, um, there are too many regulations. In, in general, not, I'm not speaking about specific case of AI. The, the, I think one could look at this as overall a fundamental function of of a stable civilization. The, lo the longer that any given civilization is stable and does not have a, a, a big war, the more rules and regulations will accumulate over time. So rules, regulations, laws, they are immortal. They never die. So, but people die. So if after every year um, more and more rules, regulations, and laws are added, uh, you, you will eventually make everything illegal. Um, and you can think of it sort of like Gulliver's Travels, where Gulliver, if, if, if the nation is Gulliver, it, it's being tied down by one little regulatory string at a time. And eventually you have millions of strings, and then the giant can't move. And so in the, I think there needs to be uh, something where we uh, delete rules, regulations, and laws. Because um, if we keep, if we simply, if, if all we do is add them, Eventually, we will be able to do nothing. Okay. Shall, shall, shall I do some question about your companies? Because um, here there are all the young people, not only the young people from an important, important Italian party, and they, most of them use the social network. They use X. And um, I, I, I saw in the past uh, days that the CEO of Disney said, I don't want to invest any advertising on X. And he's... Uh, investing, uh, for example, in the Meta, in the Instagram, and he said uh, there are problems uh, of 
I don't know which kind of problem they find on X. Yeah, in, in some comparison. I want child you, exploration what, on what, what, what Instagram. Kind of, yeah, what, what's, what's going on? Why, why an important investor like Disney said something so tough on, on X? What's going on there? Well, I think, first of all, I think X will be, will be fine. Um, and um, we are actually already seeing um, advertisers return to, okay. to X. Um, so I guess they were, I don't know, upset with something I said or something. I don't know. Um, but um, they, you know, <laughs> advertisers, I think, are the brand advertisers are a little, they're always worried about their brand. And, yeah. um, you know, maybe, I think maybe a bit more than they should be. Um, but I think it's a short term issue. Um, like I said, the, the advertisers, they sometimes get upset, but then they usually calm down and they return to advertising. So, um, Come on, you know that there is the walk virus over there. Well, oh, yes. I, I, right. I have to no, say, so I, I don't it's want like, to answer for you. Yeah, yeah, no, no you're right, you're right. The, the, <laughs> if, if we're going to fight the woke mind virus, then the woke mind virus will fight back. And unfortunately, Disney is deeply infected with the, the woke <laughs> mind virus. In fact, if you ask an AI what is the most woke company on earth, it's Disney. Really? <laughs> 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 you know? But... And, and you have to say, what would, I mean, I think they should be asking themselves, what would Walt Disney think of Disney today? I think he's turning in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's not happy. Sure, sure. You know, if, if the namesake of the company is not happy, that's probably a bad sign, you know? Because Walt Disney, what did he care about? He cared about bringing joy to people's lives. He poured, you know, um, ma making wonderful things that children and families could enjoy. Um, and, uh, you know, he was... He, created some of the, the coolest, um, uh, you know, art in the world and so, stuff that even a hundred years after it's created, we still yeah. remember it and, and still, it's still a major thing. But you have to say how great was Walt Disney. It was amazing. Um, but now uh, D Disney, at least for now, is deeply infected with the uh, work mind virus. I think that will, you know... That will change. Obviously. Yeah, oh, I hope so. He arrived at the European Commission. They're not investing on X. Huh? You know that. I Maybe they're a little, be, they got the work, work my virus too. Yeah. You don't care. I, I think so, you know. I, and, and, and it's like, why are they importing this, this crazy thing from America? You know, it's like, it's, it's just some thing that was created basically by sort of far left crazy people in U.S., colleges and now it's spreading all over the world um, and it's it's like you, you know like the thing is the work mind virus it's it's not a message of joy it's a it's a, a message of division sure it's not a message of love it's a message of hate and I was like <laughs> and so I'm like I, I'm like like you know let's uh, I don't know I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in favor of like Let's have a future that's got more love, more like, more, and, and I, let, let us build a fun, exciting future. And, and, and the work by environment is all about condemning one group and condemning this, condemning that. It's like, and, 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 and it's also like just being like a, it just wants to scold you all the time and, and treat you like a, you know, I don't know, I, who wants to be scolded, you know? It's not fun. Um, so anyway, um, I think we want to, you know, have a pr I, I, like so I, I guess at its heart my concern is that the work mind virus is anti civilizational um, and end of civilization anti civilization uh, I think civilization sure but if it represents a cost for your company what's you know you have a trade off between the cost of your position and the, and the cost for the company what's your choice and what yeah. how, how much is important in your behavior the, the free speech uh, standing that's the question. I, I, I do think free speech is incredibly important because if people cannot speak their minds, um, and th then we, we, we won't have a democracy. Democracy is uh, the foundation of democracy is freedom of speech. So. But also saying something. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, Andrea, Andrea Stropa is...
is laughing at that because he knows that it's so important for you. But tell me more about the free speech because here is very important. A person here couldn't speak for a lot of people because they were considered mavericks and worse than that. Free speech for everybody is important, not just for the person who say the right things. It's Ex correct. Exactly. No, no, no. exactly. The, the free speech means that the free, free speech is only relevant. Free speech is only meaningful when, if, if you allow people you don't like to say things you don't like. So that's how you know it's working. You know, that's how you know it's working. Um, because it, 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 as, it, once you start to censor uh, people you don't like saying things you don't like, it's only a matter of time before that censorship turns on you. Eventually, you know, you live by the sword, die by the sword. Live by censorship, die by censorship. Hey, Giovanni, ho ancora cinque minuti? Come funziona? No. Due minuti. Vabbè, allora ci abbiamo due minuti. Eh, ragazzi, qua per... hey. Che hey, cosa? Tutti fategli un applauso a Ilion, dai facciamogli altri paio di minuti, eh. Ilion, why? Allora, you spoke about free speech. You bought Twitter for the free speech. Due minuti, dai, due minuti, eh. Just for the free speech, not for the business inside. You bought... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tweet. Well, I, I mean, here's the thing. So... Um, You know, I think you have to say, like, if civilization is not strong, if civilization doesn't grow, um, then nothing else matters. You know, profits don't matter if civilization collapses. There's, there's no profits. There's no, you know, you, you, we, we are not, we, we cannot exist absent civilization. So sometimes maybe people may say, like, well, Is this an altruistic thing? I mean, I think it's, for me, it feels altruistic, but even if, it's, even if one is not altruistic, even if one is very uh, self-centered, um, you have to say, if you simply think long-term, you have to be pro-civilization because you cannot exist without civilization. Okay? <laughs> how, how important from zero to ten in the scale, from zero to ten money, you are the richest person in the world. How is important money for you from zero to ten? Zero is the less important, and ten is the, <laughs> is the good one. I don't know. I don't want to... One or two or something? No, come on. No, I mean... You have one to say, or two. Just, just one or well, two. Well, if you say, like... The, the, I mean, the, the, the reason I guess I have what so-called wealth, or it's really just shares in the company, is that I've created these companies. You know, and these companies like SpaceX and Tesla, Tesla is 140,000 jobs direct uh, worldwide, and... I, five times that number, maybe, maybe almost a million jobs when you look at the whole supply chain for, is what Tesla's created. And then SpaceX is, is about 15,000 people. And also, you know, like maybe for total supply chain, 50,000 people. So, you know, I mean, I basically, w with the help of fair, many talented people, built these companies. And then the, the so-called, these, these wealth statistics simply they simply add up what the ownership is in the companies and say, okay, this is a certain amount of money. But I don't actually have that in money. I have it in stock. I just, okay. it's, just, it's just that the companies have succeeded. Um, but How was the last, the last launch of the SpaceX? Uh, tell me something. Last question, please, uh, Giovanni. The last launch. I, I see Mauro there sitting on the floor. Why are you sitting on the floor? Are you worried about the highness? <laughs> hey, Mauro. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, right, how was the last launch? Was uh, you were an optimist about your SpaceX, the big, big? Yeah. So, well, well Starship. So, the, the 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 exciting thing about Starship is that it's the first rocket design that could make life multiplanetary, that could enable a self-sustaining um, base on the moon and a city on Mars. Um, so. Because it is it's not just a very large vehicle, but it is designed for full and rapid reusability. Um, so that would um, lower the cost of access to space by, I don't know, maybe a hundred or more. And so, and it basically, it, it's, the, it's the first rocket that is capable of um, building a base on Mars and a oh base my. on the moon. Yes, that's 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 it. yeah. <laughs> So, 
you know, you know, there's the, 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 the great Italian physicist Enrico Fermi. I'm a, I'm a big admirer of Fermi. And he had, uh, he was very good at asking profound questions. Um, and one of his questions, which is called the Fermi paradox, is where are the aliens? And one of the explanations is that, and perhaps I think the one that I think is most, appears to be most accurate, is that consciousness is extremely rare. That it's, you know, we, we, people often ask me, have I, do I know about aliens or something like that, you know? Yeah. I get asked that a lot. <laughs> um, and the crazy thing is that I've seen no evidence of aliens whatsoever. Um, this, this means that I think most likely, at least in this part of the galaxy, um, we are the only consciousness that exists. And so you can think of human consciousness really as like a, a, a tiny candle in a vast darkness. And we must do everything we can to ensure that the candle does not go out. That's great. We can finish with that. We can finish with that, William. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can finish with this. Oh, and so, so um, it's worth reading about the Fermi paradox, and because people have thought very hard about this, because um, there are these, because one of the things is like, well, maybe there are these great filters, and and so, and and these civilizations don't pass these filters. One of the filters is. Um, do we become a multi-planet species or not? If we do not become a multi-planet species, then eventually, at some point, something will happen to the planet. Either it will be uh, man-made or it will be uh, something natural, like a, a meteor, like whatever killed the dinosaurs, for example. So, and then eventually the sun will actually expand and will destroy all life on Earth. So if one cares about life on Earth at all, we should care about becoming a multi-planet species and eventually going out there and be becoming a multi-stellar species and having many star systems. You know, we, we, we want the exciting parts of science fiction to not be fiction forever. We want to make them real. And, um, yeah. Great. So. Thank you very much, Elon.